The 9,584th meeting of the Security Council is called to order. The provisional agenda for this meeting is the situation in the Middle East, including the Palestinian question. The agenda is adopted. In accordance with, the, with Rule 37 of the Council's provisional rules of procedure, I invite the representative of Israel to participate in this meeting. It is so decided. The Security Council will now begin its consideration of item two of the agenda. Members of the Council have before them document S-2024-239, the text of the draft resolution submitted by the United States of America. The Council is ready to proceed to the vote on the draft resolution before it. I now give the floor to those members of the Council who wish to make statements before the vote. I give the floor to the representative of the United States. Thank you, Mr. President. Colleagues, for all the stories that have been written about divisions in this council, and there are many real divisions, I believe most of us share many of the same goals. First and foremost, we want to see an immediate and sustained ceasefire as part of a deal that leads to the release of all hostages being held by Hamas and other groups, and that will allow much more life-saving humanitarian aid to get into Gaza. Of course, we can't just want that to happen. We have to make that happen. We have to do the hard work of diplomacy. I know you've heard me say that a lot, and that's because it's the truth. A Security Council resolution means much less if it is not actually made real on the ground. That's why the United States, Egypt, and Qatar are working around the clock in the region to secure an immediate and sustained ceasefire as part of a deal that leads to the release of all hostages being held by Hamas and other groups that will help us address the dire humanitarian crisis in Gaza. We believe we're close. We're not there yet, unfortunately. And this moment is one where the Security Council has a critical role to play. By adopting the resolution before us, we can put pressure on Hamas to accept the deal on the table. Colleagues, you don't need me to tell you that every day without a deal, meaning every day without a ceasefire, leads to more needless suffering. For more than 100 hostages, including a one-year-old child being held in cap captivity by Hamas and other groups, for innocent Palestinians in Gaza, who have been displaced, who are starving, who desperately need peace. For Israelis who have continued to face missile attacks from Hamas, a terrorist group that set this conflict into motion on October 7th. Every day without a deal means more needless suffering. This resolution will move us closer to securing that deal and help us alleviate that suffering and I urge all council members to vote yes, to vote for a resolution that at long last condemns Hamas for its horrific terrorist attacks and sexual violence, that makes clear that all civilians, Palestinians and Israelis, should be able to live without fear of violence, that demands the protection of civilians in Gaza and stresses that a major ground offensive in Rafah poses a grave threat to civilians, even as we still work toward eliminating Hamas from all parts of Gaza. That calls on Israel to eliminate all barriers and restrictions to humanitarian aid, especially as the threat of famine looms large in northern Gaza. That condemns calls to resettle Gaza and makes clear that the Palestinian Authority should have ultimate authority over Gaza. And that reiterates this council's support for a two-state solution. 
This is a strong resolution. It's the byproduct of exhaustive, inclusive negotiations. It reflects the consensus of this council. And it does more than just call for a ceasefire. It helps to make, that, make a ceasefire possible. It would be a historic mistake for the council to not adopt this text. And I again urge all council members to vote yes. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of the United States for their statement. I give the floor to the representative of Russian Federation. Mr. President, the United Nations Security Council has for a half a year, six months, been unable to adopt a document with a demand for a ceasefire in Gaza. All of the attempts, time and again, came up against the resistance of the United States, who four times, in cold blood, cast a veto in this chamber. In this time, we have heard from U.S. colleagues repeatedly their justifications. Either they were saying that the achievement of a ceasefire is premature, insofar as there is a need to give space for so-called counterterrorism efforts of Israel, or they demanded for the Security Council not to stand in the way of effective diplomacy of Washington on the ground. I, that is a quote. Or they called for uh, us to wait for the onset of Ramadan when apparently an agreement would definitely be reached for a ceasefire, for an end to the violence. And now, six months have elapsed. Gaza has virtually been wiped from the earth. And now the US representative, without blinking, has been asserting that Washington has finally begun to recognize the need for a ceasefire. This <clears throat> sluggish thought process in Washington has cost the lives, has been come at the cost of the lives of 32,000 peaceful Palestinians two-thirds of whom are women and children, and even now we have observed a typical hypocritical spectacle when wrapped up in a ceasefire, the United States have been trying to sell a product to the membership of the Security Council and to the entire international community. They've been trying to sell something completely different, namely a diluted formulation about a, deter about a definition and determination of the imperative for a ceasefire. This kind of uh, philosophical passages about moral imperatives uh, are seen in limited quantities in the work of Immanuel Kant. However, to save the lives of peaceful civ uh, Palestinian civilians, this is not enough. And this is in no way what is stipulated in the mandate of the UN Security Council, the council which is vested with a unique mechanism to demand a ceasefire and were necessary to compel compliance therewith. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, during an official interview in Jeddah on the 20th of March with uh, the correspondent Al Haddach, stated, and I quote, well, in fact, we actually have a resolution that we put forward right now that's before the UN Security Council that does call for an immediate ceasefire tied to the release of hostages, and we hope very much that countries will support that, end quote. However, in the text of the US draft, which has been put to the vote today, there is no such call. So what turns out is that either the US representative at the United Nations or the US Secretary of State have been deliberately misleading the international community. Distinguished colleagues, from the very onset, it was clear that the so-called negotiations which our US colleagues have been engaged in on this issue have been focused gear, uh, me, merely to drag out the time. All of our comments, all of our red lines were time and time disregarded, as were the proposals of a number of other delegations. This was some kind of an empty rhetorical exercise rather than normal work on a document. The American product is exceedingly politicized, the sole purpose of which is to help to uh, play, into, play to the voters, to throw them a bone in the form of some kind of a mention of a ceasefire in Gaza. 
and to establish the U.S.'s political ambitions in the region through the establishment of terrorist labels and to ensure the impunity of Israel, whose crimes in the draft are not even assessed. I wish to draw attention to the following. The U.S. draft contains an effective green light for Israel to mount a military operation in Rafah. At the very least, the authors try to make it to such that nothing would prevent Western Jerusalem from continuing their brutal cleansing of the south of the Gaza Strip. And what is Washington actually trying to achieve? We have already stated that we will no longer tolerate pointless resolutions which do not contain a call for a ceasefire which lead us to nowhere. This draft should not pass with the majority of the membership to send a message about the in, uh, uh, admissibility, not the palliative, but uh, the actual intentions of Washington. It would be very strange for us to see uh, the, those members of the council of whom there are a majority who understand this and who persuaded us of the deficiencies in the U.S. draft, it would be, we'd be surprised if they now lift their hands voting in favor of it. Ladies and gentlemen, if you do this, you will cover yourselves in disgrace. Consider once again, how will you look before the population of the Middle East in front of your own populations if you support this hypocritical initiative which is designed to disorient the international community and essentially to undermine the authority of the council uh, making sure that it cannot have an impact on the situation on the ground that this council will not be able to have an impact of the situation on the ground to ensure that it not get in the way of the White House. Are you willing to play into their hands when it comes to this unsavory spectacle? The Russian Federation will not do this. As a permanent member of the UN Security Council, as one of the founders of the United Nations, we recognize the historical global responsibility we shoulder for the maintenance of international peace and security. We cannot allow the Security Council to become an instrument instrument in the advancement of Washington's destructive policy in the Middle East. If this resolution is to be adopted, this would definitively close the door when it comes to discussions about the need for a ceasefire in Gaza. This would free the hands of Israel and it would uh, result in all of Gaza, in its entire population, having to face destruction, devastation, or expulsion. We are not guided by what is convenient for Washington and satel satellites, the satellites who raise their hands following instructions from Washington. We do not follow this. What, we, what guides us is what is necessary for the Palestinian people and what helps to advance peace. We call upon the membership of the Security Council not to allow this to occur to vote against the U.S. draft. Mr. President, for the United Nations Security Council to ultimately be in a position to deliver upon its mandate for the maintenance of international peace and security, a number of non-permanent members of the Security Council have drafted an alternative draft resolution which stipulates black on white the demand for both a ceasefire and the unconditional release of hostages. This is a balanced and an apolitical document. We see no reason for which the membership of the Security Council, for the members of the Security Council not to support this, unless a ceasefire and the release of hostages is not part of their plans. This is an attempt to allow the Council to comply with the noble functions that have been vested in it. And I call for you not to let this opportunity slip away. Thank you for your attention. I thank the representative of Russian Federation for their statement. I shall put the draft <coughs> I shall put the draft resolution to the vote now. Will those in will those in favor of the draft resolution contained in document S twenty twenty four two hundred thirty nine
please raise their hand. Those again, uh, those against. Abstention. <clears throat> the result of the voting is as follows. 11 votes in favor, three votes against, one abstention. The draft resolution has not been adopted owing to the negative vote of a permanent member of the council. I now, I now give the floor to those members of the council who wish to make statements after the vote. I give the floor to the representative of the United States. Thank you again, Mr. President. Colleagues, today the, the United States put forward a resolution in good faith after consulting with all council members and after multiple rounds of edits. The vast majority of this council voted in favor of this resolution. But unfortunately, Russia and China decided to exercise its veto. And now, Russia and China will give you all sorts of explanations for its obstruction. But whether or not it will admit it, there are two deeply, deeply cynical reasons behind its votes. First, Russian China still could not bring itself to condemn Hamas's terrorist attacks on October 7th. Can we just pause on that for a moment? Russian China refuses to condemn Hamas for burning people alive for gunning down innocent civilians at a concert, for raping women and girls, for taking hundreds of people hostage. This was the deadliest single attack on Jews since the Holocaust. And a permanent member of this council can't even condemn it. I'm sorry, it's, it's really outrageous, and it's below the dignity of this body. The second reason behind this veto is not just cynical, it's also petty. Russia and China simply did not want to vote for a resolution that was penned by the United States because it would rather see us fail than to see this council succeed. Even after inclusive consultations over weeks and weeks, even after negotiations and edits produced a draft that received overwhelming council support. And as you saw today, nearly every council member voted to put the full weight of this body behind the diplomatic efforts to secure an immediate and sustained ceasefire as part of a deal that leads to the release of all hostages that will allow much more humanitarian aid to get into Gaza. But once again, Russia put politics over, progr over progress. Russia, who has carried out an unprovoked war on its neighbor, has the audacity and the hypocrisy to throw stones when it lives in a glass house itself. So let's be honest, for all the fiery rhetoric, we all know that Russia and China are not doing anything diplomatically to advance a lasting peace or to meaningfully contribute to the humanitarian response effort. Colleagues, there is obviously another resolution that some of you would like to be considered. But in its current form, that text fails to support sensitive diplomacy in the region. Worse, it, 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 it could actually give Hamas an excuse to walk away from the deal on the table. All of us want to see this council speak out, but we should not move forward with any resolution that jeopardizes the ongoing negotiations. And these are not just negotiations that are being carried out by the United States others in the region, Qatar and Egypt, are engaged on these negotiations. So if that alternative resolution comes up for a vote and does not support the diplomacy happening on the ground, we may once again find this council deadlocked. I truly hope that that does not come about. And so for our part, the 
the United States will keep at it. We'll continue to work toward a deal alongside Qatar and Egypt. And we will work with any council member that is seriously interested in adopting a resolution that will help make that deal possible. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of the United States for their statement. I give the floor to the representative of the United Kingdom. Thank you, President. The United Kingdom voted yes on the text before us this morning. We voted yes on the need for an immediate and sustained ceasefire to protect civilians, allow humanitarian aid in, and alleviate suffering. We voted yes on the call for an international humanitarian law to be upheld, for the release of hostages, to reject forced displacement, and to urge against a ground offensive into Rafa. President, Palestinians are facing a devastating and growing humanitarian crisis, which will not improve until more aid can get in to Gaza. So we are deeply disappointed that Russia and China were unable to support this council to clearly and unequivocally state the need for an immediate and sustained ceasefire to that end. Through this resolution, the Security Council would have rightly and for the first time unequivocally condemned Hamas terrorist attacks. We're disappointed that the Council was not able to send this important message due to the vetoes cast by Russia and China. We welcome the patient and constructive consultation by the United States on this text. For our part, we will continue to do everything we can to get aid into Gaza as quickly as possible by land, sea and air. But an immediate stop in the fighting is the only way to get aid into Gaza that is so desperately needed and make progress towards a permanent, sustainable ceasefire. I thank you. I thank the representative of the United Kingdom for their statement. I give the, I give the floor to the representative of Algeria. Thank you, Mr. President. I address to you today not only as representative of Algeria, but also as a representative of the whole Arab world. Witnessing the unfolding tragedy in Palestine, our region is devastated by the violence inflicted upon the Palestinian people. Live scenes of destruction and killing inflicting profound suffering are not bearable anymore. Since the beginning of the aggression against the Palestinian people, the Arab group have consistently called to put an end to this carnage. Only by ceasing hostilities we can alleviate the immense suffering and ensure that large-scale humanitarian assistance reaches those in need. For this purpose, we presented last month a draft resolution who garnered significant support within 
the Security Council, but it was ultimately vetoed. We firmly believe that its adoption could have saved thousands of lives of innocent people. It is beyond any doubt that Resolution 2712 and 2720 have fallen short due to the absence of a clear demand for a ceasefire. Those who believe that the Israeli occupying power will choose to uphold this, its international legal obligation are mistaken. They must abandon this fiction. Mr. President, since the circulation of this draft resolution over a month ago, Algeria has participated actively and in good faith in the negotiation process, proposing reasonable edit to achieve a more balanced and acceptable text. We acknowledge the effort made by the, the U.S. delegation, especially Ambassador Greenfield, in accommodating some of our proposals. However, our core concerns remained unaddressed, despite the many circulated revised versions. Throughout this process, we emphasized relentlessly the urgency of an immediate ceasefire to prevent further loss of life. We echoed the demand of millions of people and humanitarian actors for an immediate cessation of hostilities. Regrettably, the draft resolution falls short of our expectations. It fails to adequately address these main issues and the immense suffering enduring by the Palestinian people. Over five months, the conflict in Gaza has resulted in the tragic loss of life of more than 32,000 Palestinian lives. 32,000 Palestinian lives. More than 74 injuries. 74,000 injuries with 12,000 suffering permanent disabilities. These are not mere statistics. They represent lives. They represent dreams. They represent hopes who have been destroyed. Alarmingly, the text avoid mentioning the responsibility of the Israeli occupying power. These individuals were not lost due to act of self-harm. They were killed. Their perpetrators must be held accountable for us in the Arab world. In the Islamic nation, in the whole world, Palestinians' lives undeniably matter. Mr. President, the text presented today 
does not convey a clear message of peace. It tacitly allows for continuing civilian, civilian casualties and lack clear safeguard to prevent further escalation. It is a laissez passer to continuing killing the Palestinian civilian. The emphasis on measures, I quote, on measures to reduce civilian harm from ongoing and future operation and future operation implies a license for continuing bloodshed. In this context, we are particularly concerned about a potential military operation in Rafa. Such a military operation would have devastating consequences. Algeria, along with other regional countries, has actively pursued reconciliation between Palestinian factions because we trust that a united Palestine is essential for its future and the future of the peace process. We believe that specific provision within the draft resolution jeopardize the future of the Palestinian state and hinder ongoing reconciliation efforts. Building a Palestinian state requires the collective effort of all its citizens, all its citizens. And the Security Council actions should support, not impede, this process. Mr. President, UNRWA, UNRWA plays a vital role in assisting Palestinian refugees not only in Palestine, but also in Jordan, in Lebanon, in Syria. It is a tool of regional stability. Any resolution undermining UNRWA mandates would exacerbate the already dear humanitarian situation. UNRWA continuing operation is essential until Palestinian refugees are able to sustain themselves or to return home as stipulated by international law. Mr. President, while supporting parallel efforts to end the bloodshed, this should not prevent the Council from demanding a ceasefire, a clear ceasefire to alleviate the Palestinian suffering. The Security Council duty is by the Charter to maintain international peace and security. It should be empowered to impose to impose a ceasefire. For all this reason, Algeria voted against this draft resolution. Mr. President, we urge all Security Council members to prioritize the immediate cessation of hostilities 
the Security Council must take decisive and meaningful action to halt, to halt the violence and pave the way for a sustainable peace process in Palestine and also in the wider region. It is still within our capacity to act and urgently, urgently, I thank you. I thank the representative of Algeria for their statement. I give the floor to the representative of France. Monsieur le Président. Mr. President, France thanks the United States for having proposed this resolution and we voted in favor of it. This Council must continue to act while the catastrophic humanitarian situation in Gaza is worsening every day. France calls for the immediate and unconditional release of all hostages. It also calls for an immediate and lasting ceasefire. We therefore support the efforts of several elected members of this Council proposing a draft resolution along those lines and we welcome the fact that that resolution unreservedly supports ongoing efforts in Doha. France unreservedly supports these efforts. We call for the comprehensive respect for international law and the Geneva Conventions. This is an absolute requirement. France is opposed firmly to any Israeli offensive in Rafah that can only lead to a humanitarian disaster. There is also an urgent need for massive delivery of humanitarian aid to Gaza. The Ashdod port must be opened. The direct land link from Jordan and all crossing points. In line with our principles, France will continue to call this council to condemn the terrorist acts committed by Hamas and other terrorist groups on the 7th of October. Last October, the vast majority of us had supported the Brazilian draft, which clearly outlined these acts. France recalls its commitment, its tireless commitment to Israel's security and its solidarity with the Israeli people, Israeli people following these attacks. These attacks cannot justify the unjustifiable suffering of the Palestinians in Gaza. France remains committed to a political settlement to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. And we recall that only a two-state solution will ensure the security of Israel as well as the legitimate aspirations of the Palestinian people for a state. It is the duty of this council to recall this, and that is why France will shoulder its responsibilities and will propose an initiative to the Security Council. Thank you. I thank the representative of France for their statement. I give the floor to the rep representative of the Republic of Korea. Uh, <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. President. The Republic of Korea voted in favor of the draft resolution proposed by the U.S. As this includes positive elements that can plant the seeds for more sustainable peace in Palestine and Israel including support for the ongoing negotiations to achieve the release of hostages and an immediate ceasefire. The Republic of Korea reaffirms its firm position, calling for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire, objecting to any ground operation in Rafa, and stressing the importance of the protection of civilians. Thus, we note with the appreciation that the draft resolution made it clear that an immediate and sustained ceasefire is imperative to protect civilians and alleviating humanitar alleviate humanitarian suffering. And we complement the efforts by the U.S. government to incorporate comments from the council members. This draft resolution proposed by the U.S. contains other important elements including support for diplomatic efforts to ensure ceasefire and the release of all remaining hostages, clear condemnation of all acts of terrorism, including the deplorable Hamas-led attacks of the 7th of October, and concern over the ground offensive into Rafah, 
It also demands all parties to enable the full, immediate, safe, sustained, and unhindered delivery of humanitarian assistance to the civilian population throughout Gaza. In addition, it includes rejections of forced displacement, the establishment of so-called buffer zones, and new settlements in Gaza, as well as a commitment to the two-state solution. Thus, it is regrettable that another opportunity for this council to forge a favorable response has failed to draw consensus. The Republic of Korea will continue to constructively engage with other members of this council to reach a meaningful outcome in responding to the grave situation in Gaza. I thank you. I thank the representative of the Republic of Korea for their statement. I give the floor to the representative of China. Mr. President, China voted against the draft resolution that has just been put to the vote. And I would like to explain China's vote and relevant considerations as follows. More than 160 days have passed since the outbreak of the Gaza conflict. In the face of a human tragedy in which more than 32,000 innocent civilians have lost their lives and millions are suffering from famine, the most urgent action to be taken by the Council is to promote an immediate, unconditional and sustained ceasefire. This is the universal call of the international community. The decision taken by the emergency special session of the General Assembly a few months ago and the solemn appeal by the Secretary General of the UN to the Council while invoking Article 99 of the Charter. The Council has dragged its feet and wasted too much time in this regard. We all recall that the US introduced its own draft resolution after vetoing on February the 20th the overwhelming consensus among council members on an immediate ceasefire Over the past month, the draft has undergone several iterations and contains elements that respond to the concerns of the international community, but it has always evaded and dodged the most central issue, that of a ceasefire. The final text remains ambiguous and does not call for an immediate ceasefire, nor does it even provide an answer to the question of realizing a ceasefire in the short term. This is a clear deviation from the consensus of the council members and fell far short of the expectations of the international community. An immediate ceasefire is a fundamental prerequisite for saving lives, expanding humanitarian access and preventing greater conflicts. The US draft, on the contrary, sets up preconditions for a ceasefire, which is no different from giving a green light to continued killings, which is unacceptable. The draft is also very unbalanced in many other aspects. In particular, with regard to Israel's recent and repeated declarations of plans for a military offensive on Rafah, the draft does not clearly and unequivocally state its opposition, which would send an utterly wrong signal and lead to severe consequences. Any action taken by the Security Council should stand the test of history and the scrutiny of morality and conscience. With a view to safeguarding truth and justice, safeguarding the UN Charter, its purposes and principles, and safeguarding the d dignity of the Council, and also based on the concerns and strong opposition from the Arab states. With this draft resolution, China together with Algeria and Russia have voted against the draft resolution. Mr. President, members of the Council have now before them another draft resolution that was the result of collective consultations among elective members of the Council. This draft 
is clear on the issue of a ceasefire and is in line with the correct direction of the Council's action and is of great relevance. China supports this draft. We hope that the members of the Council will reach agreement on this basis as soon as possible and send a clear signal calling for an immediate ceasefire and on the end of the fightings. Like other members, China has, from the outset, called for the immediate release of all hostages, a demand repeatedly reiterated in the Security Council resolutions 2712 and 2720. We welcome the mediation efforts by Egypt, Qatar and others to this end. And we hope that all detainees will be released at an early date. China rejects the accusations by the US and the UK against China's voting position. They are groundless accusations. If the US were serious about ceasefire, it wouldn't have vetoed time and again multiple council resolutions. It wouldn't have taken such a detour and played game of words while being ambiguous and evasive on critical issues. If the US is serious about a ceasefire, then please vote in favor of the other draft resolution clearly calling for a ceasefire so that a ceasefire can be finally and immediately achieved. The Palestinians, their sufferings can be alleviated and ended and hostages be released without delay at an early date. For the US, at the current stage, what is most important is not words, but their deeds, their actions. No matter what, China will continue to work with council members and the international community to play a responsible and constructive role in order to achieve ceasefire and put an end to the war, implement a two-state solution, alleviate the suffering of the catastrophe, and promote a comprehensive, just and lasting solution to the question of Palestine. Thank you, Mr. President.